Hello, my name's Leo, boat builder, sailor, tally-ho. You know the story. Um, so recently there's been uh, a lot of comments on my videos, people wondering if the boat is nearly finished, um, suggesting that she might be launched soon. Um, some people are even a little bit sad that maybe there won't be any videos soon if the boat's finished. And so this video is gonna be asking that question. Is the boat nearly finished? What have we got left to do? As well as catching up on the work that we've been doing over the last couple of weeks. Um, so the short answer is, I'm not going to keep you waiting to the end of the video, <laughs> short answer is no, Talia is not nearly finished. There's a huge amount of work left to do. Um, and in fact, there's so much left to do that the completion of this boat, the launch of Talia is by no means guaranteed. There's some really big challenges up ahead. So we're going to be talking about those challenges um, and talking about all the different jobs we have to do uh, before the boat's finished. Now, some of the footage in this video is from a few weeks ago. So you might see Zeal around, for instance, even though he's actually left for Alaska now. Um, but we're going to start off by catching up with Patrick and a little bit of painting. All right, welcome to my office. Now, this is a space you may not have seen before, but it's the top floor of the workshop. And it's where I do a lot of video editing, uh, a lot of emailing, a lot of designing, drawing, um, a lot of sourcing materials, a lot of banging my head against the wall, all that sort of thing. Um, but it's a pretty good space. Anyway, I thought we'd come up here uh, because to better illustrate how much work we have to do and what work we have to do, um, I'm going to show you some of the project management software and tools that I use because uh, it's a very nice visual illustration uh, of the flow of work. Now, up until a few months ago, all this stuff was just in my head. Um, and uh, to be honest, that caused me quite a lot of stress and anxiety as the project got more complicated. Um, but I got some help, some tuition from a project management coach in Germany via Zoom. Um, and it's been really helpful to get this stuff out of my head and onto paper, as it were. So um, let's have a look at the software and um, we'll see what we're up against. So this software is Microsoft Project and in the software, each one of these blue rectangles is a particular task or activity. And so if I zoom in on one of these, um, you can see the, the name of the task and the duration, how long it's going to take for one person to do that task. And then underneath there's some estimated start and finish dates. Now the blue arrows show what tasks have to be completed before the next one can be started. Now even though you can zoom out pretty far in this software, you can't actually zoom out far enough that you can see the whole thing on one page which is a little bit frustrating but there we go we're gonna have to scroll around so you can see this whole web or diagram starts um, right here and then goes off in several different directions and so one clump of jobs here is all accommodation jobs it's all to do with the interior of the boat now the next big group we've got is systems and that is a huge group and obviously has a lot of subgroups as do all these groups in fact uh, the next one is on deck that's not quite so big then there's hull, um, and this is all still stuff we haven't done yet. Everything that's been done is not on this chart. Um, after that, we've got rig, which is a pretty big one, lots of subcategories there, um, and then we've got coding, etc. so paperwork -y stuff. Now the red path is the one that's going to hold up the project. At the end is the path which is gonna take the longest um, because there's lots of long jobs within it. And so that's the most important thing to focus on uh, to reduce the length of the project as a whole. Now eventually all these different uh, paths and webs come together um, and the end milestone of this whole chart is Tallyho being launched. Now I'm going to talk later in more detail about some of the specific chains in this web and uh, some more specific jobs, but I just wanted to give a sort of overview of the complexity of uh, all the work going forwards and how these jobs lead onto each other and um, what has to be planned.
How we doing? Don't. Hey, good morning, Pete. No. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Too early. <laughs> when it, I just sleep. What's this? When have you been put in charge of cameras? I keep seeing you with cameras now. Hey, just don't. Why does he give you that kind of? Just talk to me like it's I don't regular. Get, I don't get that kind of. I, I don't get that privilege. Just pretend this is a teddy bear in my hand. All right. This is my new. I'm supposed to pretend that's bear. a teddy bear in your. Yeah, just don't think of the are camera. You with a teddy bear in your hand at work <laughs> at eight o'clock in the morning. Don't judge me. Why do you bring a teddy bear, teddy bear to work? <laughs> I'm putting the first coat of top coat on the top of the pieces of the front four peak storage locker area. Well, you're so good at this. Thanks, bud. <laughs> this morning I was just like, I, I could hear your footsteps going over there. You always know Leo's footsteps because they're like really fast and deliberate and everyone else is like, just slow. You, Richard is like this. And then Pete is like. Because like, cause like he doesn't have actual feet, so they move in different ways. But, um, but yeah, I, I heard the camera coming and I was like, okay. Let's rehearse. What are we doing? So I'm keen to continue working uh, in the main companionway area, but Richard's doing some work in there right now. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, install a few corner posts in the forward area of the boat so that we can start progressing in that area, uh, putting bunks and so on up there.
and dry fitting some molding for this corner of a bulkhead that will be for the head. And once it's dry fitted, I'm gonna fasten it and sand it. Very good. That for the partition? Uh, yeah, this is gonna have a diagonal and then oh, I see. a tone groove up here. Yeah, you need something there. Yeah, yeah just, just up to here. Yeah. <laughs> the complicated little transition there. Yeah. Second bunk up mm -hmm. could just be like a single outboard mm -hmm. with some kind of slidey or forty deal that pulls out to make it a double. Slidey deal. So that when it's just a single, the bottom berth would have headroom. Ah. This person could sit like this and read or whatever. Yeah. It also makes for like good access. Right, it's a good step up. Yeah. Is that possible? To do a slide out double bed? Yeah. I mean, anything's possible. It would probably be a pain in the oh. there. Because <laughs> I mean, double bed, that's quite a bit of load. That's two people. It's quite a bit of load. <laughs> Now I'm really pleased with this layout in general. Um, it's a good use of space to have uh, bunks stacked like this. And a lot of the time, these bunks, or at least one of them will be used for storage for sale bags and so on. Um, and it is really nice to have a double for those times when you might be sailing uh, with two couples on board the boat. So there's a double in the mast cabin and the double here. 
However, although doubles are really nice when you're sort of coastal cruising or relaxing in harbour, when you're offshore sailing, they're not much good. You really want uh, single narrow berths so you're not rocking around, flying all over the place. Having mocked this up, I had what I think is a pretty smart idea, and that is to have this top berth changing from a double to a single. And so what that would mean would be that the aft end of it here would actually push in. There'd be a hinge on the forward end here. When this is pulled out as a double, this bunk below is still usable. It's a little tight getting in, but once you're in, it's actually really pretty comfortable. Once this double top berth is folded away into a single, um, it would be much, much easier to get in and out. And also, in that case, I would be able to sit up like this very comfortably and read my book or have a conversation with my upstairs neighbor. Are these gonna be the posts? Yeah. Yeah, that part is a little tight, huh? I think that'll be all right. I'd sleep in that. That bunk is even big enough for Zeal to fit his gigantic arms. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, dude. I don't want to know what's going on up there. Gold footy. <laughs> Unless I'm invited. You can just drill a hole right about here. <laughs> <laughs> So I talked a little bit about project management, but what specific jobs uh, are important and challenging and how long is it all going to take? Well, you can really split up a boat into three categories, I guess, in terms of the workload. Uh, there's the hull, the interior and the rig. Um, and so in terms of the hull, um, some of the biggest challenges coming up are going to be the deck hatches. Um, they're very fine work and very time consuming. Um, they're also very expensive because uh, really they should be made in teak, um, although I'm looking into alternatives. Then you got the bulwarks around the outside of the boat, the cap rail, which again should be teak, um, and then the whole cockpit, which has all got to be built. Um, the cockpit combing, winches, deck hardware, and so on. Uh, we've also got to design and build the steering system and the rudder, um, and so there's a lot of work left just in the hull itself. In the interior, uh, the biggest challenge for me is the systems because I don't come really from a systems background, but I've been uh, spending a lot of time uh, trying to design the systems for the boat because I want to get them planned and in the boat before we put too much uh, cabinetry in. And so there's, um, there's water systems, freshwater, raw water, grey water, black water um, that all have their separate plumbing systems. Um, there is of course a, a diesel system with two tanks and filters and so on. Um, there's an extensive electrical system and because we've got this hybrid diesel electric motor um, we've got actually four voltages on board we've got 12 volts DC 48 volts DC uh, 110 AC and 230 AC because I want the boat to be able to operate in American and European waters so that's all fairly complicated um, I am I think gonna have a water maker on board um, so that's another system uh, there's going to be a hydronic heating system um, then there's propane, um, and one we're missing, well, the mechanical systems, of course, um, the prop, um, driveline, assembly, all that stuff. Now, the systems are especially challenging because not only are they way beyond my comprehension a lot of the time, but they're very expensive. Um, and so trying to make that work uh, is difficult. Um, then there's of course all the cabinetry and uh, a lot of finishing work and so on inside the boat as well. George. Yeah. What are you doing there? I am gluing in these dominoes. And tell me again, but look at the camera. I am gluing in these dominoes. Uh, they are going to be the joint between this piece in my hand here yes, and this you're cord. You're definitely not looking at the camera. All I can see is the top of your hat. <laughs> Do that meticulous glue job while looking at the camera and talking to the YouTube channel. Yeah. 
No pressure. No. But it's all going to be perfect. <laughs> Guys. Sorry, George is just listening to whale sounds in his airphones there, so you gotta yell at him if you need his attention. <laughs> that sounds very soothing. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. It's just boo. Am I right, George? Exactly right. <laughs> Keeps me calm. <laughs> Hey Leo, I noticed that we're both wearing these vapor masks and you're not. Does that worry you at all? Um, no, I'm feeling remarkably unworried and a little bit lightheaded. <laughs> Leo's been having... No, that's probably fine. I have no idea why. <laughs> Leo's been sniffing paint since he was... Since, <laughs> since before you were born, George. Oh, yeah. Dude, the roller is like a freaking upgrade. Moving on to the rig, we've got to build the spars. That is a huge job in itself, a lot of uh, woodwork, very time consuming. Um, and then there's all the hardware that has to go on the spars. Um, lots of custom designed and fabricated metalwork and rigging work to uh, attach the rig and sails to the spars there. Um, the standing rig itself is a huge job. The wires which hold up the mast um, and then the sails. Now even if I'm not as directly involved with the physical making of the sails, um, that's going to be a big challenge nonetheless, uh, both financially uh, but also in terms of time frame because the design of the sails can't actually be finalized until the spars are built because we want to be able to physically test the stiffness of the spars to allow for that uh, in our sail design. Um, so that is something that could very well hold up the project um, if we don't get the spars built soon enough. So really a lot of this stuff has kind of got to happen simultaneously, otherwise uh, we'll be here for years and years. And in fact, there's an old rule which I don't really like to think about, but it's not a uh, boat builder's rule, which uh, is the rule of thirds. And so the hull is a third of the work, the interior is a third of the work, and the rig is a third of the work which kind of puts it into perspective how much work we've got left to do because uh, we're sort of getting there with the hull. Um, we've only really just started with the interior and we've barely started on the rig. So in terms of actual work, I mean, we're, we're miles away, um, miles and miles away, uh, which is a little bit upsetting. But things are going a lot faster than when I started the project. Um, we have a really good team now have some really good support um, and so things are moving a lot quicker um, so you know on balance how long do we have left well maybe two years um, but there are big challenges there are some really big challenges ahead logistical financial which is not something I will complain about at all um, I am so grateful from the amazing support that we get and that makes this project possible um, but it's another thing to think about doing the accounts balancing the books um, making this all flow uh, is a real challenge as well So you'll probably remember a couple of videos ago I was designing the drip tray to go underneath the engine and catch any oil um, and since then it has been fabricated and delivered here.
When people ask me when the boat's going to be finished, or and that is the most common question I hear. No project I've ever worked on, even short short jobs for repair and restoration, make a launch date. Um, <laughs> it's almost unheard of. Uh, a project of this magnitude, uh, especially coming from a younger shipwright's uh, perspective, is that I couldn't possibly estimate how long this is going to take. Um, because there, there's so many variables involved. Uh, projects like this don't really happen anymore. Um, if they're, you know, if we still had huge boat building shops that were producing wood boats every year um, with 30 and 40 person crews, um, where everyone uh, was, was a, you know, part of a well-oiled machine where they knew exactly what their task was, uh, then it would, yes, definitely go a lot faster. It say? will be done one day. We have <laughs> there is a day. It's out there. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Well, it's about time for me to wrap it up. Uh, there was a lot more I wanted to talk about project management stuff, uh, work on deck. Uh, there's even a new shipwright to introduce you to. But it's going to have to wait till the next video because it is 10.30 nearly. And um, I've got a few hours of editing left uh, before. I'm able to finish this video and release it tomorrow morning. Uh, so I hope you enjoy this video. Um, I hope it didn't sound at all like I was complaining about the amount of work we have left to do. I feel so lucky and so privileged to be in this position doing this work uh, and the challenges uh, just make me appreciate even more the amazing, the unbelievable community uh, that has been supporting this project. So thank you for watching. Um, huge thank you for supporting this project and of course a huge thank you to the amazing team here and to everybody involved and i'll see you next time cheers <laughs>